Hello, quilt people! Welcome back to quiltingcowboy.com, everybody's favorite daytime talk show. Starring Mitzi, everyone's favorite school teacher and mother to Natalie Wood, whose DJ skills are legendary. Guillaume, the French Canadian baker. Slappy Von Chucklehead. Randy Bravo, the classical violinist. Peter Prairie, the folk singer and musical stylist. Annie, who tragically died last week. And cameo appearances by everyone's favorite supportive spouse, John Allen Rouse, who has a front row seat to this bucket of crazy 24-7. And your host, everybody's favorite quilting cowboy, Dale Allen Rouse! Dale's internet presence may not be appropriate for children, the uptight heterosexual man and the young lady in Sacramento who called me the drunk uncle of crafts. All right, so I have been wanting to do this video for quite some time. It's uh, a lot of information and I'm going to continue to do this about every other week. Um, so we'll do at least for the next couple weeks um, a craft or a project or a quilting tutorial. But then every other one I want to do um, color theory. Okay, it's a lot of stuff that I learned in graphic design school that I know is going to really help you uh, when it comes to fabric selection. This cannot be stressed enough. I see it all the time when I'm teaching because people uh, will read one of my patterns, which often calls for a light, medium, and dark tone. Okay, tone is different than color. Okay, tone speaks to its level of color depth, right, in terms of black to white. Okay, so you have to think about it that way. So let's look at um, this one quilt, my Stetson Cross, and um, how its tones in different colorways make it more successful or just look different, okay? To clarify one thing, I've been using the kind of the generic version of what is tone. Technically, in real color theory, tone is adding black or white to a color or hue, right, that makes it darker or lighter. That's technically tone. Contrast speaks to its, um, you know, depth of color next to other colors, okay? So that's technically the, the you know, the actual um, definition of that, but I'm not going to get caught up on that. So if I use tone or contrast, I can use them kind of in intermixed ways and hopefully it won't throw us off. Okay, we all know what we're talking about. Yay. <laughs> all right, so um, I'm gonna show you three different stets and crosses. What you're gonna wanna look for is the, on the first one, the black area. Ooh, let me grab it. I should probably have this up on the wall, but I was rather proud of letting you all see this one. I love this one. It's so fun. Sad story about this though. Uh, I created it after a friend of mine was murdered. And uh, anyhow, uh, I wanted to create a piece that was um, kind of inspired by, you know, the universe or, and our planet Earth kind of releasing his energy back into the universe. So um, I went and took this Dresden plate class. And after I made them, I was like, what the hell am I going to do with a Dresden plate? Like, I'm just not a Dresden plate guy, right? Like, that's just design-wise, that's that's not me, which is fine. Um, but I then had these Dresden plates that I wanted to use, and I'm like, how am I going to, you know, incorporate this? So th when this happened, um, I, I thought, oh, wow, this kind of looks like a spore or something. And so then I came up with this design of these palm leaves. Uh, this piece is called Blue Palms. And um, it was just essentially this movement of these leaves that I saw, right? And when the leaves were doing this, I was like, oh, wow, that would be... Anyways... Shut up. <laughs> Not afraid to talk, am I? Especially to myself, in my second bedroom, alone. <laughs> All right, what am I doing? Um, oh yes, uh, okay. So when we're talking about this, right? This is the uh, original Stetson Cross. And so on these other um, versions that I'm gonna be putting here in the video, I want you to really pay attention to this center. Okay, this black here and how it relates to the medium tone or, you know, its contrast to this neighboring fabric versus this is this contrast to this. In this one, this is the best example of dark, medium, and light. Okay, and you'll see in the other versions of Stetson Cross that it doesn't read quite the same. Okay, it has less 
contrast, right? So then this part of the block, right, the center black part, doesn't pop as much on the other colors. Let me show you. All right. So then on this one, you can see how the dark is a little bit more similar in contrast to its neighboring fabric, all right? Which are both very um, in high contrast to the off-white, right? So you have these that are more similar than the last one, and then they're very different from the light, okay? And I'm gonna show you one more, and then we're gonna um, talk about how to actually uh, work with this, right, when you're shopping for fabric so that you make sure that you have a dark, medium and light and you understand the tonal value of each um, prior to putting it in the quilt, okay? All right, then this is the third version and you can see again, even though these are completely different colors or hues, right? The brown next to the red are very similar and don't have very much contrast at all. And I'm not saying that that's bad or good, it just changes the impression that you get from the overall block, right? Because I almost have, rather than dark, medium, and light, I almost have dark, dark, and light, right? And that's what we want to avoid if you're trying to go for something like the original Stetson Cross and get that real pop of the three different areas, the dark, the medium, and the light, okay? So uh, let me show you a few tips and tricks while you're shopping for fabric to make sure that you are in fact selecting the right colors for your project, okay? Let's do that. If you wanna really make sure that your contrast levels are correct, what you're gonna to wanna to do is turn it black and white. And you can just do that with your phone. Take a picture of it and then go to your photos and then hit edit. And then it will give you a black and white option where those three little circles are that talks about different ways of coloring that image, okay? Let's finish up with our Stetson Cross blocks. We're gonna take all three of them, put them side by side, turn them black and white, and that's where you can really see the contrast and the difference between a true dark, medium tone, and light versus one that doesn't have as much contrast, okay? Let's take a look at these different colors. Sure, they look good and they go together well, but do they have enough tonal contrast in order to achieve what you're looking to do in your quilt block? So let's look at these and now let's turn them black and white and see how much tonal contrast they have to, from one to another. As you can see, it's not a lot. So let's substitute this. Okay, let's go back to regular colors. Let's substitute this with just a few different ones and you'll see what a difference that can make. I'm going to swap out just a few colors, right? And replace them with ones that have different tonal contrast. Now let's turn this black and white. Do you see the difference? So you can see that not only do you need to be factoring in one color to another, does it look nice to each other, next to each other, but are you also factoring in the tonal contrast from one fabric to its neighbors, okay? And again, um, taking a picture of them and shooting it black and white will um, really help you understand that. So take the photo, convert it to black and white, look to see how much tonal contrast it has to its neighbor, and if that's in fact what you want for your block. Again, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just what do you want and are you achieving your you know actual goals? <laughs> Look at all this mess back here. <laughs> it's just the way it is, you know. <laughs> all right, um, what am I doing? Yes, so I hope that that was helpful. And as always, you can reach me at quiltingcowboy at gmail.com or find me on any social media at quiltingcowboy. And um, I hope to hear from you soon. Have a good day. Bye.